A detransitioner is someone who regrets going through a medical gender transition. It describes a person who thought that they were trans, thought that they had a gender dysphoria, and then after the transition, they realized they deal with other mental health issues. There is a huge rise in detransitioners all across the West. And the most disturbing part of all of this is how so many of these people transitioned when they were children. And I'm gonna react to one of those stories today. My name is Grace, I'm a 19 year old detransitioning femme and I started testosterone at 13 in the state of Arizona. To get to that point, I went through nine months of gender therapy, which I do not believe was long enough. My current therapist recommends about one to two years before she will even think about writing a letter. The reason why I was able to be fast-tracked through it so quickly was because I had wealthy parents that were liberal. There is no other reason, nothing special I did or things I said or whatever. The only reason why I was able to get testosterone so young was because I had liberal wealthy parents. 13 years old. Unbelievable and so unethical. People ask me how to get testosterone so young, and literally all I can say is be privileged. It doesn't sound like you were that privileged, because it's due to your parents' wealth that you transitioned, which you shouldn't have been through. In other words, if your parents weren't rich, you wouldn't have been through all of this. My beliefs are that you should have one to two years of gender therapy and a full psych evaluation. Although it sounds great, if you start at age 13, it means you can start hormones at age 15. And that's still way too effing young. When I say my lived experience isn't cis, it's because I don't have memories of girlhood. Not really. I mean, I started transitioning at 12 and I have trauma associated with lots of things in my life, which is known to cause memory loss and memory issues. So I honestly can't sit here and tell you, oh yes, I was gender non-conforming and that's why I transitioned. Or, oh yes, I had a complicated relationship with gender. Because I don't know how I was feeling or what I was thinking or what I said, what I did. I, I have no idea. This is so effed up. She didn't know why she transitioned at age 13. Why she wanted to receive testosterone a drug that will make irreversible changes to her body, to her mind. I honestly don't know what to say. Many detransitioners have experienced trauma in their childhood, especially body-related trauma. And as you all know, the mind will make you forget some of these traumatic things that happen to you to protect itself. So it must be so scary for her to sit there as an adult, I assume, young adult at least, and have to live with the side effects, the consequences of the testosterone. Children cannot consent to the medical transition. A 12-year-old, a 13-year-old cannot consent to permanently altering their bodies, affecting their future sex life and fertility. And to give a 13-year-old girl testosterone who has mental health issues, who has been through trauma, is even more disgusting. And the doctor giving her testosterone should be in jail. That's my opinion. I really try to maintain a positive attitude about my detransition, but I definitely get into mindsets where I'm like, why did I do this to myself? You didn't do this to yourself. Adults did this to you when you were a child. I think it's a form of coping mechanism when detransitioners blame themselves rather than the doctors they trusted, and of course their parents. And I don't think that's right. Sometimes parents push their children to transition because they want a trans child. And that's horrible, of course. But I think the doctors are the ones to blame. They're the ones with the degrees, with the medical knowledge, and they should know better. Why, like, what was the reason? Because I don't remember. I was so dissociated or I had trauma or whatever was going on at the time to make me not remember what, what I was feeling, what I was thinking. I don't remember a single thing about the first doctor's appointments I had. My mom tells me things that happened at those appointments all the time and I just don't even remember anything. Why didn't anyone notice this? Why didn't her parents notice that she wasn't present? when she was a child, a teenager? And most importantly, why didn't a medical professional 
or a gender therapist, a therapist notice that she was in so much pain from trauma that she literally had memory loss issues. I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a therapist, so maybe I'm being unfair here, maybe it's impossible to know, but I do not understand why she had to go through so much neglect. Medical neglect, but also neglect in her own family. So there are several things that probably played a role in my decision to transition. Trauma probably played a role in my transition. Um, dissociation probably played a role in my transition. Body image issues, the inherent disconnect from society and womanhood that you feel as a lesbian, and the inherent disconnect from others that you feel as an autistic child. And she's autistic. Of course. We see a lot of people who identify as trans, especially girls who are autistic. It makes sense if a woman transitions due to sexual trauma. They don't want to live with the body that they were born in because someone ruined that for her, right? And it makes sense if someone does it due to autism. There's a hyperfixation aspect of it. There's a not feeling comfortable with, you know, especially during puberty. I think a lot of autistic girls feel uncomfortable with what happens. I have heard so many times before from lesbians that if they were children today, they would have transitioned. Because when they were children, 30 years ago or something, they were tomboys, they didn't relate to some gender expectations. They played with the boys, they didn't want to play with the girls. And some even told their parents, I want to be a boy. Girls don't even need to be lesbians to have experienced this. All of this has nothing to do with gender dysphoria, with transsexualism. Because children playing with the opposite sex, with the opposite sex toys as children, are not signs of gender dysphoria. Because where is the gender-related discomfort? Discomfort! Girls who are tomboys are not automatically gender dysphoric. If a boy wants to wear a dress and wants to play with Barbies, where's the discomfort in that? If it makes him happy, we're not talking about dysphoria. No matter why a child wants to transition, they shouldn't go through it. They shouldn't be allowed to. Because no matter if the child wants to transition due to trauma, other mental health issues, or even if the child does deal with chronic gender dysphoria, the drugs will still harm the children. It doesn't matter who gives the child the drugs, it can be a homeless man on the street who knows nothing about medicine, or it could be a doctor, educated doctor. It doesn't matter. It still doesn't change the fact that it will damage all children, even the ones who will live a transsexual life as an adult. One of the biggest reasons why these lesbians didn't transition when they were kids just because they were gender nonconforming, whatever that means was because they didn't get brainwashed into believing that there's only one way to be a woman. And if you can't relate to it, it must mean that you're a boy. And that's why we see a rise in teenage girls transitioning today. Today we have all these made up genders, which are just unnecessary because there's no limit on how many ways you can be a boy or a girl. So we don't need more genders. Moving on, I want to show you how the trans community treats detransitioners. Watch this. Way too many trans people are immediately triggered when they hear the story of a detransitioner, and honestly, it's kind of getting on my nerves. I need you to sit and unpack. Sit and unpack. Why does seeing a detrans person on your feed put you into an immediate fight or flight response? Think about that for a minute. Because I feel like I don't even have a chance with some of you guys that as soon as I open my mouth, you're going to assume that I'm a turf and not listen to what I have to say. Why does my negative experience with gender-affirming healthcare scare you so much? Like, that's weird. That's a good question, and I can answer that. Trans activists are afraid of the rise in detransitioners. Because detransitioners' existence alone proves that trans ideology is toxic, and the activists are full of shit. Activists have been pushing for years now. Anyone who claims to be trans should transition. They call it self-identification, self-ID. They claim self-ID is harmless, but here we have detransitioners coming out 
talking about their stories and talking about how it's not harmless, it's actually harmful to let especially children make these types of decisions. Trans activists are frustrated to hear detransitioners coming out because they will open up so many people's eyes. And that means activists will lose a lot of support in the future. Hopefully. Detransitioners are a threat to trans ideology. And it's true that some from the trans community will get triggered when hearing detrans stories because they feel insecure about their own transition. And they're afraid of normal people out there will no longer believe in their transness. And I think it's so pathetic. This person says, God, detransitioners are so annoying. Please keep your mouth shut. Sorry you made poor choices, but you shouldn't make it harder for kids that need to transition. Wow. What a disgusting human being. No kids need to transition. Anyways, here's her response. Every time someone like you makes a comment like this, I'm, go I'm gonna take it as a sign to talk about it even more. So, thank you. Love that response, and I agree. It means you need to speak even louder about this topic. So this Ryan person is blaming a child for what adults did to her when she was not even mentally present as a child was dissociated, dealt with trauma. Detransitioning was my worst nightmare, for sure. But when I first started transitioning, probably about two years after I started transitioning, I saw one of my friends from my transgender summer camp that I went to come out and start detransitioning. Seeing that one detransitioned person gave me the confidence for the rest of my transition that if I detransitioned, I would be okay. And that's what I'm really doing here is I'm not convincing you to detransition. I'm not telling you to detransition. I'm not telling you that the detransitioned life is better than the transitioned life. I'm here sharing my story for the very, very, very small percentage of trans people that will detransition because everybody needs someone to see that looks like them. Excellent. And it's also a great point because the trans community has created so many labels and will scream at you if you don't understand the difference between Gray gender and agender, demisexual and demiromantic, I don't know. And they also talk a lot about the importance of representation. But when it comes to detransitioners, they don't want to hear their perspective, they don't want them to be seen, they don't want anyone to listen to detransitioners. I want to thank this detrans woman for speaking up. I think she's doing a fantastic job of showing people out there that we shouldn't do this to children, we should leave them alone. Mental health is sometimes complicated, and people dealing with mental health issues, especially children, deserve to get help and get the right type of treatment. Before you go, I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Follow me on social media, and I cannot wait to see you all in the comments down below. Peace out.